Well, hello. My name is Rachel, and I'll be giving our reflection tonight. I recently joined the staff team, um, and I am serving right now as our kids team leader and as well as the PA for Tom. <laughs> so very fun jobs I have. <laughs> one is very serious, and one I had to, was able to have an inflatable bunny this past Sunday, if you guys were here. So very different kinds of jobs. <laughs> And if you do not know who I am, uh, my name is Rachel. I'm actually from the United States of America, hence why I have a bit of a different accent. Don't sound like many of you. Uh, but tonight I'm going to be reading from Galatians 4, 1 to 3. And it says, What I am saying is that as long as an heir is underage, he is no different from a slave, although he owns the whole estate. The heir is subject to guardians and trustees until the time set by his father. So also we were in slavery under the elemental spiritual forces of the world. So before I start, I just want to give a brief overview of the week of Holy Week. So on Sunday, it starts, and we have the triumphal entry, hence our inflatable bunny on Sunday. <laughs> but actually, the triumphal entry was actually about um, Jesus coming into Jerusalem, and people laid down their cloaks, and they shouted, Hosanna, because they realized and declared him as king. And then on Monday, we come, and Jesus goes into the temple of Jerusalem, and it's the day that he clears the tables, he overturns the tables. And then on Tuesday, Jesus has quite an intense day. He goes around, and he's preaching. He actually warns his disciples of the future, of what's coming to them. So it's quite an intense day for Jesus. But then on Wednesday, he stops, and he rests, and he waits for what's going to happen. On Thursday, we come to Thursday, and he has the Last Supper. Um, he then is betrayed by Judas, and he's arrested. On Friday, we come, um, and Jesus then goes to the cross. And Saturday, he's in the grave, and Sunday, he rises again. And the only day in this time, in this whole week, that there's really nothing happening is Wednesday, today. And luckily, I got this verse to talk about. The day of nothing. <laughs> but Wednesday was a day of rest for Jesus, but it was also a day of waiting. He knew what was going to happen to him, and so he's rested and he waited. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I'm not a huge fan of waiting for things. I really do not like lines. They're a huge waste of time, in my opinion. <laughs> I'm the type of person who really likes efficiency. So waiting in line for something does not seem like an ideal thing for me. You know, like those people who like if a big movie's coming out or like some big event is happening, like people will like camp all night, you know? I'm not going to be one of those people. <laughs> I'm still working on patience. <laughs> but there's a part of us that, and I'm sure, I'm sure in all of us, that hates kind of waiting. And yet this is what Jesus is called to do on this day. And as we look at this verse, it's talking about being an heir. Now, before an heir actually becomes the lord of the state or they become the head of the household, they're just waiting around. They're waiting either for their father to pass away or they're waiting for the time, the agreed upon time, where they can finally become and go step into the calling that God has had on them. Well, maybe they wouldn't say it that way, but they would finally step into what they are meant to be doing. And before they step into this, they really don't have much authority over their lives. They are, don't, are told what to do. They have no actual authority in how the money is spent. You see, they're an heir to all of this money and all of this land and all these things, but they don't actually have the ability to step into that. And as I was reflecting on this, it really reminded me of all of us. You see, when you give your life to Christ, you give your life to Christ, but then you're still here. We live here in the, on the earth in the not yet. We're not quite yet redeemed, right? So we're redeemed here on earth, but we're not quite yet made new. We're re redeemed from our sin, and yet we still struggle with it until the time when we're made completely new. And I think that in this time of waiting, we really have two options. We can seek after success in the world's eyes, or we can seek after success in the Lord's eyes. 
And in our first option, we seek success in the world's eyes. Now, in, the, in, the, in this verse, it talks about the elemental spiritual forces of the world, which sounds kind of scary, in my opinion. <laughs> but this is just talking about all of the different forces in the world that we can become slavery to. There are so many different things in this world that we can come, become slavery to. Comparison. Isn't that a big one? There are so many different things in our own lives that we can become. Maybe it's the person that you're married to that can become an idol. Maybe it's the job that you have. Maybe it's the career. There are so many different things. In the Old Testament, they had different laws that they had to follow. And they had laws just about for everything, right? If you read through Leviticus, you can see that they have laws for just about everything. (laughs) And yet when we come to the Old Testament, I think a lot of times we think of the Old Testament as like a, you know, like releasing of all of these laws, But really, in the culture that they had, the Pharisees had actually placed more rules so that they wouldn't get close to breaking a law. They had to earn their salvation, so they wouldn't want to even get close to breaking a law, so they would add all of these other different kinds of laws to themselves so that way they didn't get close to it. And yet, even in our own world, in our own culture, there are so many different laws that we become enslaved to. You know, you have to have two or three kids, Definitely not four. You have to have a house, and you have to own your house, not rent it. That's not allowed. Right? There's so many different things that there are, right? You have to eat healthily. You have to be a certain body type. You know, there are so many different rules. Even in church, you think about it. You have to give precisely one-tenth of your money, not a penny more and not a penny less. There's all of these different rules and, and that our culture and our, even, even in church, we can, we can put on ourselves. And I think, you know, there's even rules. Like, I remember there's, a, there's times in, your, in my life where, you know, I, I didn't read my Bible that day. And suddenly I'm like, oh, my goodness, I'm a horrible Christian. I didn't read my Bible today. And these are not bad things, right? Getting a house, being married, reading your Bible, they're not bad things. But if we're only doing them so that we, we can check off the checklist, then we're not truly seeking after Christ to get to know him or having these things simply to, to, we're trying to grow in our, in, in knowledge of things and not in the knowledge of who God is. But there's another type of waiting that I think that we can step into. And this is a living in freedom. John 14, 12, in John 14, 12, Jesus says that we are going to do greater things than him. Now, I don't know about you, but when I look at my life, I think about what I'm actually seeking after. And am I actually doing greater things than him? When I was, um, when I was in secondary school, my mom told me that I could not do cross country. She really wanted me to be able to do it. So she was going to try to convince me by telling me I could not do it. Now, I'm a bit stubborn, so I decided I was going to join, Right? So I join, I start running cross country. By the way, I absolutely hated it. But while I was running, you know, in running, they, they, when my coach kept telling us that not to look around to everybody else. Because when you look around to everybody else, you start slowing down. But when you're looking at the goal of where you're going, you'll run faster. And Jesus describes our Christian life as a race. And when we're looking around to everybody around us, whether that's the person next to you who has a bigger house, or the person over there who went on a great holiday. If we're looking around, we're not running the goal towards, we're not running the race towards the goal. We're running towards them. So what are you looking at? What are you running after? Jesus calls us to seek the kingdom of God first, and then all of the things will be added to us. In Jesus' own life, we see him retreating back to the Father. He constantly is, is pouring himself out to all of those around him, but then he goes back to the Father. In Romans 14, 17, it says, For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. I think if we look at our lives, we can ask ourselves, Am I growing in righteousness, peace, and joy? Or am I growing in 
What am I eating? What am I drinking? When I was, um, before I came here, I was a missionary in Barcelona. And during the time before I went to Barcelona, I had about a year where I was fundraising. And I was in this time of waiting. And I kept thinking to myself, I just want to get there. I just want to be able to start my calling. If I can just get there, then I can be able to finally step into what God's calling me to do. But I listened to this song called Take Courage, and I want to read you the, the chorus. It says, Take courage, my heart. Stay steadfast, my soul. He's in the waiting. Hold on to your hope as your triumph unfolds. He's never failing. God is in the waiting. And I realized during that time that my calling did not start when I went to the, got the next thing. My calling started now. Because my calling is not to do things. My calling is to be a child of God. In John 1, 12 to 13, he states, But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born, not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And what strikes me about an heir is that they can't do anything to earn their ability to be an heir. They're simply born into it. And when we are born again, we're born into it. You can't do anything to earn your ability to be an heir. You simply have it because Christ has accepted you in. So as you are here in a time of waiting, and they not yet, how are you going to live? Are you going to live in slavery to culture? Or are you going to live in freedom to Christ? And as I end, I just want to pray over us. Lord, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for welcoming us into your family. Thank you for making us a child of God. Thank you that we are given freedom. And Lord, I pray that you would forgive us for constantly falling back into slavery. Help us to live as your child, children, seeking after you. Help us to know our worth and our value as your child. Thank you for, for making us your children. In your name we pray. Amen.